Today we are going to look at some black and white instant film, two different cameras. First one, Fujifilm Instax Mini 7S versus the Polaroid SX70 button camera. You know, these cameras, even though one is more modern and the other is considered vintage by most standards, um, they range in price um, on the new and used market. And you can find a lot of these unused for 50, 60 bucks, depending on the kit and everything else it comes with, including the flash unit. Uh, new Fujis, they can cost up to $100 um, in their kits, but definitely around the $50, $60 range. Um, so let's take a look at these cameras first before we look at the photos I shot with them. I mean, they're pretty basic. They're both designed to give you um, an image instantly, and usually it takes a minute plus to develop. But the Fuji is activated with a lens. It does take a battery. Um, there's some dials that are pretty simple for indoor, outdoor situations. Um, there's a built-in flash, viewfinder, and a shutter button. That is it on those. There's not a lot going on on the, the Polaroid. Um, the button camera is kind of exactly what it says. It's a huge button. It does have a, a exposure dial over here, viewfinder, and that's about it. It does not require any batteries because the battery pack on these are built into the film package. Um, so you usually find these at a thrift store or somewhere and it says unable to test is because they do not have film. They cannot test them. This one is in pretty good shape. I do have a flash bar. So when we look at our photos later, you'll see some with the Polaroid and some flash photos. All right, so right now we're gonna put these aside and just talk about the film itself for a second. Uh, the Polaroid, um, as you can see, is a new pack, but it's eight photos per package. It cost me $18.89 to purchase this Next, two dollars and thirty-six cents per exposure. Uh, the image size is one hundred and eight by eighty-eight millimeters, and then on the other side, the Fuji is a ten-pack. Cost me seven dollars and ninety-eight cents to purchase. That gives me a seventy-nine cents per exposure uh, cost, so which is already a lot better. All right, first we're gonna look at it's a set of Polaroids. It's gonna be a lot of cat photos, so get ready. As I said before, I have the flash bar, so that's indoors with flash. Cats are kind of cooperating, still a little fuzzy. I'm, I'm way too close, so that's my bad. The cats are fuzzy and my background is perfect. But let's go to one that's outdoors. Seem to not getting great saturation in some of the outdoor photos. One of my favorite from winter, um, just the street scene. Trees are covered in snow, the streets covered in ice. A um, little emulsion problem down here at the bottom. But other than that, it's just kind of my, my favorite of this bunch of Polaroids. Okay, going back to some outdoor photos real quick. Um, here's one where the building was pretty much lost. Um, I think with uh, cameras like this, it's not gonna be good at judging sky from ground to subject. I think you need to eliminate one or the other. And I think if I eliminated the sky itself, I think um, the camera 
would have had better luck exposing the uh, the rest of it. Also, another emulsion problem right there. Here's one of a gazebo. Um, it's kind of a nice sepia quality, but it's pretty sharp considering. Sharper than most of these other photos. Here's one outdoors. I'm in the shade shooting towards this bridge. Um, again, good sepia quality. Uh, here's one that, you know, literally same roll of film. Not sure why. It did not expose very well. It looks like a exposed sheet of film. Um, and then, you know, or actually exposed sheet of paper, photographic paper. And then <laughs> the image was printed on top of it. It just has that dull quality. No, no, not good, not very good tonally at all. And then lastly, some uncooperative cat photos. Um, you know, the flash is firing well. My background's great. I'm too close. So you gotta remember that, especially on the Polaroid, don't get too close to your subject. Uh, I kind of remember as a kid, them telling you to stay 10 feet away while doing this. All right, so now let's look at some of the Fujis. Here's that bridge. It's kind of dark. The tone is pretty good. Um, here's that gazebo. It's a little overexposed for some reason. And here's one right before I took that gazebo picture. It's just completely overexposed. And I'm not in direct sunlight by any means. It's overcast. It's not dim at all, but it's definitely, definitely. Outdoor, good lighting, broad daylight. Outdoor, broad daylight. Flash is firing. You can see it reflected in the stop sign. Building downtown. Got no problem with that one. Or this one, the neighbor's yard. Building we saw earlier in the Polaroids. This one on the Fuji. Just a washed out sky at the ground and the building look good. Uh, again, too close. Too much in the foreground is overexposed and out of focus, but the cat looks good. And, you know, that's really all that matters. Uh, cat and the Polaroid in the same photo. And this Fuji. And one last cat photo, in case you missed it. So anyway, I think there's a, a clear winner to all of this. And I think it's going to have to be the Fuji in this case. Um, the Fuji is going to allow you to get a little closer indoor shots. It's going to be superior in those indoor shots uh, because of the constantly firing flash. Um, even my tonality on things like that, I lost the sky. You can see the power lines are lost um, in the sky, but everything else looks good. That looks great. On this building, um, but in general, when I get these others where everything is um, really muddy overall, and there's not a lot of way to control that exposure, um, I think that's why the Fuji has to win this battle. Uh, let me know what you think. Um, really, it's probably unfair to compare the two, but the technology is the same, and that's why it is fair to compare these two, because you're looking at uh, film types that are going through the same process. Um, Camera-wise, there's only a few possible changes you can make to each camera to get a good exposure. Yet, the in general, you know, it's, it's a slim margin. In general, the Fuji is delivering a better photo. So let me know what you think. If 
you're probably a recent Fuji user, maybe you've never used a Polaroid. Polaroid do, does make other cameras um, now and currently. So they can, I have not tried any of those. It is a different type of film. I do have another video. I'm going to shoot color film in two older Polaroid cameras and check out those. And those both have built-in flashes. So if you like the instant camera thing and you, you want to see more, keep following me here on YouTube and you'll see some, some more cameras being tested. All right, everybody. Thanks for looking and I'm glad you like cat photos.